So we're going to look at what happens during the antibody testing process for COVID-19 antibodies. More and more people are getting COVID-19 antibody testing to see if they've potentially had COVID. And I'm using an origami organelles model to show this process. There's a link down below if you would like to access this same model. So what we see here is in the very first step, you have well plates represented by the purple and some protein from the COVID-19 pathogen is bound to the plate. So this represents those proteins. They're also known as the viral antigens. So these are actually purified spike proteins from the surface of the COVID virus, but they've been purified, so they're not infectious. You can handle the plates and there's no risk of contracting COVID just from these little proteins. They're also invisible. You can't see these, so the plate just looks like plastic, but they are all over the surface and their purpose is to catch the antibodies, antigens and antibodies attached to each other. So the second step is that we add our samples to the plate. And we're going to start by imagining that we have a positive sample. So if the patient is positive for antibodies, then the antibodies are going to stick to the antigen. This represents the IgG antibody, which is one of the antibodies that um, is uh, a fighter against COVID-19. And this is the IgM antibody. So you can see the antibodies look a little different. Some tests test for just IgM, some test for just IgG, and some can test for both. But either way, they're attracted to these purified spike proteins, and they're going to attach to them if they are present in the sample. They'll stay in the well even after the wash step. So there are wash steps in between to wash away anything that's not bound to the plate. But these are bound. Again, they're not visible to the naked eye, so we can't see anything at this point. The next step is to add enzyme-linked secondary antibodies. So these represent our enzyme-linked secondary antibodies, and they will stick to the IgG antibody, and they'll also stick to any IgM antibody that's present. Again, there's a rinse step, and if these things are not here, if we don't have the the antibody in the patient sample, these will wash away. But if there is antibody, then the secondary antibodies with the enzyme will stick to the plate. Again, we can't see anything yet. There's no visible change at this point. So the final step is when we add the substrate. And if the substrate is present, it will attach to the enzyme on the secondary antibody. So I'm just representing the substrate with a little post-it note. And it's blue because the test will often have a color change. Um, and that color change, sometimes it turns blue. So now this is where we visibly can see that we do have antibodies present in our patient sample. Well, let's see how it's different if our patient's negative for, for COVID antibodies. The well plate would still have the antigens on the surface, but when you add the patient sample, there are no IgG or IgM antibodies. So those aren't there to stick to the antigens. You still go ahead and add the enzyme-linked secondary antibodies, but when you do it, they don't have anything to stick to, and so during your wash cycle, those are gonna wash away. You still add your substrate, but again, the substrate has no enzyme to stick to. So when you wash, this is going to rinse away. And we don't ever see that chemical reaction that happens when the substrate and the enzyme combine. So there is no color change. So this, this is the basics of how we do antibody testing for COVID-19. It's an ELISA, just like the antigen ELISA. Remember, ELISAs can check for any kind of protein. You just have to have a chemical reaction happening between the protein stuck to the well and then whatever your target protein is that you're looking for in your patient samples.